welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I just really don't like Is It Decks. I don't know why. I'm not sure what it is. I've made probably over 20 Is It Decks in my time, you know, in the intention of playing it myself, on top of the ones that I've made for my channel, the ones that I find interesting for myself, the commanders or the ideas that I find interesting for myself, I run out and make the decks and I just start playing them and I just don't like them. I don't know what it is. Something about the blue-red combination just rubs me the wrong way. I'm not sure why. Does anyone else have this situation where there is just a color combination that you just can't do it? Something about those two colors that combine or maybe those three colors that combine that really bothers you or just doesn't feel right? I have made a ton of decks, even recently, I've made a few decks that are really good and really interesting and I just can't bring myself to build them in paper because I just something about is it decks that really bugs me. However, one man's trash is another man's treasure and luckily for you guys, I got a couple decks here for you is it decks obviously that I built for myself and I just can't bring myself to put them together in paper so I'm throwing them out there for you guys to use that's what this channel is for right this channel originally was made for I come up with all these deck ideas all the time and I don't want to use them myself and rather than just throwing them in the trash I throw them out in the internet for someone else out there who is looking for an interesting deck idea so first up is an idea that I had for a long long time which is basically a I draw a second card each turn there's lots of cards out there that want you to draw a second card each turn or want you to just draw in general. So this deck is built around drawing a second card each turn, but also just draw triggers in general. The commanders for this deck are Ludovic Necro Alchemist and Ghost of Ramirez Di Pietro. It is a partner deck. Now, why did I choose these commanders? Two reasons. One, Ludovic has a draw on it, right? Ludovic's actually a really interesting commander because it encourages your opponents to attack each other. They want to get that card draw. So that's sort of an added bonus of this deck. But this is giving us almost a guaranteed second draw on our turn, which is what we're going to want in this deck for sure. Because of course, we're going to draw on our draw step normally. And then all we have to do is get in for damage, which we can do with our other commander very easily. And then we will get that second draw trigger on our end step. Ghost of Ramirez Di Pietro is in here again, just because it's easy for us to get in for damage with him. But also when he deals combat damage to a player, choose up to one target card in a graveyard that was discarded or put from a library this turn, put that card into owner's hand so we're going to be using this for ourselves because we're going to be cycling quite a bit in this deck as well so now we can cycle a card on our turn attack with our commander and then get that cycling card back out of our graveyard because it is a card that we discarded right that's what cycling is so there is a cycling sub theme here as well so we do have a lot of cycling matters cards in here we have discard matters stuff like surly badgesaur because we are going to be discarding quite a bit but of course the main point of the deck is drawing a second card each turn right like improbable alliance whenever you draw your second card each turn create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying just getting value out of that second draw every turn min wily illusionist you know you wouldn't think to put this in a deck like this but whenever you draw a second card each turn create a 1-1 one, one blue illusion creature token with this creature gets plus one plus oh for each other illusion you control whenever an illusion you control dies you may put a permanent card with mana value less than or equal to that creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield this is the only thing that's creating illusion in the deck but it's enough if we're going to be drawing our second card on for sure our turn and then we can also be doing on our opponent's turns as well we're going to be getting a lot of those illusions they're going to be getting bigger every time we have another illusion in play so this is just going to allow us to put stuff from our hand into play for free mad ratter whenever you draw your second card each turn create two one one black rat creature tokens so there is sort of a heavy token theme here incidentally as well i also got onerophage and tooth the imaginary friend right these guys just like draws in general we are going to be drawing a lot so these guys just like us drawing obviously teferi's ageless insight is going to be a phenomenal fit here as well if you would draw a card except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps draw two cards instead this is a replacement effect this is going to replace all of your draws except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps with a two card draw so that's going to be fantastic because we're going to be doing that a lot a really great fit in this deck and a card that i don't ever see is thundering gin three blue and a red gin three four with flying whenever 
Mirror Thundering Gin attacks, it deals damage to any target equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Pretty good card. Even if you only draw one card on your draw step, then you swing with this guy, you get to deal one damage to a creature. But if we can get some cycling going, get some other card draw going on our turn, now when we attack, we can get three, four damage thrown around with this guy. So that's a pretty neat fit in the deck. I got a couple of the Niv Mizzets in here because they like us drawing cards a lot. I got the Locust God in here because he likes us drawing cards all the time. And then of course, I got a lot of the cycling stuff as well that fit nicely into the whole drawing card theme. This is a really good deck. In fact, it's quite a powerful one as well. I won quite a few games with it. I'd say the power level for sure is at least a seven here. It's a pretty darn good deck, works really well. I just, I'm not feeling it. That's just the way I am. If I'm not feeling it with a deck, I just move on from it. So it is yours to go after. The deck list, of course, is in the description below, but I got another one for you guys. This is one that I just made recently. And again, it was another sort of idea I had. I wasn't necessarily building around my commander. I was building around an idea that I wanted to use, and it is the polymorph idea. I destroy my own creature, and then I reveal cards from the top of my library until I put a creature card onto the battlefield. And of course, the idea being, I have a whole bunch of really powerful busted creatures that I am cheating into play. And there's just so many of these effects now, right? Reality Scramble, Transmorgify, right? These are the similar effects of, I want to kill my own creatures and then reveal cards until I put a giant busted creature into play. That is what this deck is doing. I got Mass Polymorph, which will do this with all of my creatures. I have Divergent Transformations, which is going to exile two target creatures and then also has Undaunted. You can also use this on your opponent's creatures as well. I don't know if they have an Avacyn or an Elishnord or something really annoying in play. You could use this to exile their creature also. But of course, we have to get those creatures into play. And in order to do so, we have to have creatures, right? This is the tricky part about this deck. You have to have creatures in play, but you also want to be able to reveal creatures and only get the good stuff. And the best way to do that, of course, is with tokens. We can't have any cheap little creatures in our deck, or we might reveal those creatures when we're revealing cards off the top of our library. We want to guarantee we're only getting the big stuff. So as it happens, this turned out to be a background deck. I got a background commander here, Gut, True, Soul, Zealot, and I partnered it with Feywild Visitor because both of these are dealing in the token theme, right? Gut says whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature or an artifact. If you do, create a 4-1 black skeleton creature token with menace that's tapped and attacking. So we can turn our artifacts into token creatures that we can then use our polymorph effects on. Feywild Visitor says commander creatures you own have whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you create a 1-1 blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. So this is just an effect that is going to be creating token creatures for us, which we want. So the idea here is we get our gut and our Feywild Visitor out pretty early in the game and then we just start creating tokens and by the time we get to like four or five mana pretty early in the game, we can start casting those polymorph effects and flipping into some giant creatures like a Nezahal or a Balefire Dragon. Again, this is one of those decks where you could just put whatever your personal favorites are and that's what I did in this deck. I got Magmatic Force in here. I got Tidespout Tyrant. These are the kind of cards that we will be flipping into. For four mana, I'm going to destroy a 1-1 token creature and then flip into a Tide Spout Tyrant. That's essentially what we're going with. There is the randomness of you're not sure what creature you're going to get, but you are guaranteed to get something really, really big. The cheapest creature I have in this entire deck is Mind Rack Liege. It's six mana. It's going to give all of our blue creatures an anthem. It's going to give all of our red creatures an anthem. But the main reason why I put it in the deck is because it has an ability that is, works really well with what we're doing. You can pay four hybrid is it mana. Put a blue or red creature from your hand onto the battlefield. So if we end up with any of those giant creatures in our hand, now we can just pay four mana and put them directly into play if we have our Mind Rack Liege. I also have one of my personal favorites, Credit Voucher, in case we end up with some of those giant creatures in our hand, right? That's where this card is fantastic. We can pay two and tap and sacrifice it, shuffle any number of cards from our hand into our library and then draw that many cards. So now if we have a couple of our giant creatures in our hand, we can just shuffle them back into our library because that's where we want them, right? Also, because we are in a little bit of a sacrifice artifact theme, that's what our commander is doing. I threw a little bit of that in here as well. I have Servo Schematic and Nimble Right Schematic. Both are fantastic fits here because they're going to enter the battlefield and create a token for us. And they also want to be going to the graveyard so we can then sacrifice them to our commander's ability and then they'll create another token. So these are great token creators that work really well in the deck. I also have Soul Separator in the deck, which is a really interesting fit. Three mana artifact, pay five and tap, sacrifice soul separator, exile.
exile target creature card from your graveyard. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1-1. One, one. It's a spirit in addition to its other types, and it has flying. Put a black zombie creature token onto the battlefield with power and toughness equal to that card's power and toughness. So the reason I threw this in the deck is because I thought, okay, we got all these big nasty creatures. They're going to end up going to the graveyard at some point. This is a really neat way to reuse them. So if I have my Nezahal in play, for example, and it ends up dying, now I can soul separate it from my graveyard for five mana. And what's going to happen is I'm going to get a 7-7 seven, seven zombie token. That's pretty darn good. And then I'm also going to get a 1-1 one, one flying spirit that gives me no maximum hand size. And whenever opponent cast a non-creature spell, I get to draw a card. So I'm getting all those fantastic abilities off of my Nezahal. And I'm also getting a giant 7-7 seven, seven creature. Pretty fantastic, right? And it puts our opponents in the situation where, okay, well, now I have one removal spell. Which one am I going to use it on? So it almost makes these fantastic creatures even more fantastic because it's splitting them into two different creatures. Great inclusion in the deck, I think. It's a really fun, interesting deck. Honestly, I play tested it a few times. It works really well. I don't know why I don't like it. Honestly, I can't explain it. I just don't seem to like Is It decks for whatever reason. But like I said, this only benefits you guys. So now you have the opportunity to play these decks yourself. Again, the deck list for this guy is in the description below. So I got two really cool, really interesting Is It decks you guys can run with if you want to. Again, this is why I made this channel in the first place because I'm making these decks all the time and I play test them a few times if I don't really find them to be that appealing for me. I don't want to just throw them away because I did put a lot of work into them. So now they're out there for you guys to run with if you want to and enjoy. Have fun with them, but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.